Welcome to Girl Talk with the boys. We got the boys here tonight, minus one, I think, in our crew. And a few of the girls are, are absent tonight as well. But we still going to roll on with a good show. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about uh, mental health and how each of us are doing in the economy, whatever, if it's a recession, we don't know if it's a recession, how we're just feeling overall in general, where we think, what are some of the things that we could do as individuals to keep our spirits and morale up. And then we want to hear from the boys on how they define a sexy woman. What's a sexy woman to you? Uh, wants to know how men view them are they sexy and what that means so we're going to talk about that but first we want to absolutely do introductions and i'm just going to start over here on my right we have mike this is Mike B from the ATL coming at you live. Glad to be here. <laughs> and brother Rasbo, you brother Rasbo today. Yes, I am. And every day. <laughs> <laughs> brother praise, Rasbo. Praise, praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, do. And I do. Brother Rasbo, you can call me brother. Or you can call me Rasbo. I answer both. That's what's up. And last but not least, K Diddy in the building. Always AKA. here, aka Kai Carr, aka you know who I am, baby. Here to represent. Let's do it. Brooklyn's in the house. Word. All right, fellas. So who wants to start first? How are you feeling? What's up? What's going on? Every time I turn on the news or look at social media, social media, by the way, is like an emotional roller coaster. You can see something really funny, and then the next minute something really treacherous has happened or someone has died a celebrity or whatever. Then you see something funny or then you see something about astrology. So how do you feel? How are you guys feeling? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling all right. Um, I will say there, there has been, just as you um, just mentioned, there's a lot going on in the news. Um, Work-wise, I've been fine. Um, me trying to get a new business idea off the ground has been kind of um, a little iffy, if I can use that word. A um, couple little pitfalls I ran into that I did overcome, but um, I'm honestly a little concerned about our, uh, the new um, issues between China and Taiwan um, for several reasons. So some things like that been been on my mind lately, to be honest with you. Yeah. With your personal business, well, well, both. You know, being being military, um, I, I, you know, don't feel comfortable thinking about how you we can end up in a situation. Um, even though I'm not in anymore, you know, I don't want to see any Americans dealing with that situation. But the other thing is, yeah, for for business wise, um, it's it's going to affect, um, you know, what happens with with uh, some of the product that I'm actually sourcing out of China. So there'll be some challenges with that. And then also I think as um, a global issue, um, because a lot, of, a lot of things are being done out of China um, and Taiwan, this can, this can hold up our current situation with what initially was because of COVID kind of uh, putting a halt on a lot of uh, supplies now we have another conflict with a country who just wants control over over other, you know, countries. So something we I've been thinking Watch about. Putin do it, so <clears throat> and it could be a copycat syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. That's Michael, deep. is that is that some of the? Uh, is that based off of feedback you've been getting from the personnel that you've been conversing back and forth with in your efforts to getting things done? Is that where those well, concerns come from or is it more uh, just personal concerns that just from it's, you paying attention? Yeah, mostly from me paying attention and listening to what's on the news. To be honest with you, 
my suppliers aren't, I don't think they, because they don't know what answer to give, they're kind of trying to steer the conversation around that. And it's, that actually has been bothering me when I asked them, you know, if this hits the fan, what happens with my product? What happens with my injection modes that cost me a lot of money to build? How, how is that coming to play with me getting them shipped immediately in China to the United States? Um, they already have my ideas and stuff like that. And that's actually part of um, the treaty and things that agreements that China had with the United States was, you know, them copying a lot of products and stuff. So they have, they have some ideas, they have my idea over here and they have the injection mode. They literally could take, take that idea and run with it um, without us doing anything about it, without the well, agreement, we, not to say yeah. they listen anyway, but anyway, so there's, that's one thing, but then also, um, you know, I just dropped a lot of money, um, to try to get this, this invention launched. And that, that truly is a lot of money that, you know, I would have just really given away, um, you know, over $30,000. I would have literally just given that away. So, well, I we think, gonna pray that, that, that you don't lose that money and that everything works itself out yeah. or you make it back before. Before right. The fan. Yeah. Amen, sister. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was being yeah. serious, man. Why is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, like right. you... <laughs> nah, it was serious. I meant it to be serious. Don't don't edit this one out, please. Because I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Who want to go next? Uh, man, I go next. Win. All right. I go next. I've been kind of in a little funk lately, and I have no idea why. So I'm reflecting and thinking. And seeking introspectively to see if I can put my finger on it. Okay. But I, I can't I say what I think it is. Anarizes are are tickling me because I have no idea why. <laughs> that is how you did it, buddy. Is it really how I did it? Yes. You did that. You did it like that, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man, that was my inner bougie coming out, that's all. That's your inner bougie. That was my inner bougie coming out. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, but, you know, I, I think two and a half years in a pandemic and yeah. you know, every, every other day there's a new strain. And I just saw a commercial the other day of Pfizer with a oral medication for COVID. And as soon as I saw that commercial, I looked at my mom and I said, they said in the beginning of this pandemic to follow the money. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Melissa? We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Follow the money. Now they have an oral medication from Pfizer that you have to buy over the counter that you can buy. What's over the it counter. do? It's for COVID. Oh, so when, if you get COVID, you take this oral medication? Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, there's a new strand apparently in uh, our new virus apparently breaking out in China. Yeah, then we got monkeypox. So, uh, you know, just it's, it's just been a lot going on, you know, and I think um, life is cyclical. We yeah, have our ups and we have life. our downs. Yeah, so but I'm good. Overall, I'm good. I'm blessed. I always say every day above day, every day above ground is a good day. Mm -hmm. Yes. That means you always have another chance. Yes. A new day to start again. Praise God. You wake up as a blessing. Everybody doesn't wake up every day. That's what I'm saying. Every day above ground is a good day. That's what I tell myself. When I feel down, I tell myself that every day above ground is a good day, bro. Got yet another yep. day to make it right. Get it together. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through, figure it out. It's true. I'd rather be, I'd rather be doing that than pushing up daisies. Or taking life for granted. A lot of times we just take it for granted. You take mm. a lot of stuff for granted. Your your limbs, Amen. even your ability to see. You know, get out of bed. A lot of things we take for granted. 
ability to go to the grocery store and pick up some damn food. People can't, everyone is not able to do that right now. That's for sure. That's true. No. It's a real heavy conversation, isn't it? I know. It is. Not, what is we talked yeah, like, about is it's all a part of our mental health. But I yeah. think what's important is that if the listeners are listening, is that the, our environment is dictating how you feel, like how we take in some of these things, where you really don't realize how much you're ingesting from the environment that yeah. really dictates how you feeling as an individual. But it, you know, Mike demonstrated what's going on in the world is a domino effect. Not only is he worried about his business, but he's worried about his fellow soldiers and how it's going to affect the economy. So those things we do carry on our in our brains and on our back. As... You are what you eat. Mm-hmm. Yep. Brother Raz Boot. Brother. I've been I've been dealing with a lot of challenges lately. Uh, professionally and personally, I, I um, I'm of the opinion though now, I, I have been, but it's more in focus for me now. That doesn't what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. So, mm-hmm. I felt like I was breaking up a little bit, but the um, the big takeaway though that I have, you know, personally that I would like to share is, I uh, it forced me to change. The challenges forced me to change up my habits. I, I had some uh, some bad habits, like some morning habits that just weren't. Uh, they weren't they weren't good for uh, starting off the day, right? So uh, now I'm more on daily workouts, prayer, meditation in the morning, waking up early so that I could get those things done. And um, it's helped me trem- tremendously. So I feel as though God has been, been using these things that have seemed like obstacles and barriers to just right. sharpen and strengthen, strengthen me. And uh, I'm better for it. And I'm, I'm happy because of it. So yeah. it's a beautiful thing. So that, that goes to your point on mental health. And uh, also, you know, just how I'm doing personally. Faith without yeah. works is dead, man. Word. I like the, he, that he, put he in, said. Go ahead. No, he put he put in the work. Word. That's what I was gonna say. Word. I was gonna say that you taking the initiative to wake up early and push yourself to do those things to make those changes. It's mm-hmm. crucial because mm-hmm. it's easy just to lay in bed. It is. And then get up all yeah. sluggish and, and do your job all sluggishly, you know, yeah. and now you, you're you sluggish throughout the day. You're ready to get to the end of the day and you're tired and it's just cyclical. Right. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's habits, you know, building positive habits that uh, the habits that you want that gets you the results that you want. And, but you know uh, what yep. you have, bro? What's that? Willpower. Willpower. Yeah. You have willpower, man. You know, I'm t- uh, uh, y'all, people don't realize how rare that is to to do what this guy is doing. I mean, if, if it if it was easy, we wouldn't have miracle pills and miracle surgeries for weight loss. Yeah. And I was at at my doctor's office for you know routine checkup. And I was like, hey, what's that? I was like, oh, it's like a machine, and they put it on you, and it burns fat. And I was like, and what? How, do, how does that work? And I'm thinking to my man, like, man, people just want it easy. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but this dude saw some bad habits, and they were impacting, his, impacting him, and he said, you know what? I'm going to be a man of character, principles, and boundaries. And this is how I'm going to choose to live my life. And he did it. Yeah. That, that that's powerful tremendous. stuff, people. I'm telling you. That's because that's rare. That's rare. So I commend you, Brother Rasbo. Well, thank you. Brother Brother yeah, Noomsky has forgiven you. <laughs> 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 
but that's rare, mm. bro. So that's ah. that's that's no small yeah. feat, I tell you. Yeah. Well, yeah. more the bigger question it, is so how I, do you feel? How do I feel right now? Like, how do you feel now that you've made those changes? Do you? I feel. The I feel. I feel much better. Like uh, in the the beginning of the day, uh, just the the fact that I'm getting myself out of bed. Well, take it back a step further. You know, getting to bed at a certain time, right? Yeah. Was the big was the big thing for me. It wasn't necessarily waking up at a certain time that was the big thing for me. It was more like getting to bed at a certain time at night. And then being able to do that, I feel, I feel, I feel, and I still feel in the morning that that's a huge accomplishment when I wake up. So if I wake up 3.30, 4 in the morning, I'm not exhausted and just wanting to fall back to sleep. I'm ready to tackle the day. And when I'm tackling the day, I'm pausing, I'm working out, I'm showering, I'm, 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 I'm praying as soon as I wake up. You know, mm -hmm. uh, which I always did anyway. But uh, after that, I, I'm working out. I'm showering. I'm meditating. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm meditating, and those are huge wins. Mm. Before five a.m., before five a.m., I've I've tackled pretty much everything I needed to tackle. If God yes. was to take me right then, I'm still good. You know, and then now I could concentrate on everything else I got to do, getting ready. Mm -hmm. But my stuff is already ready. I'm boom 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 and then my my head is clear i'm not worried about all the things that could possibly creep into my head and and destroy me you know like just mess me up and have my brain scattered so yeah i feel great long Clarity. story that's short awesome. Yeah. that's awesome that's dope, man. Man. Yeah, yeah, word up, word up, man. Yeah, hand, man. inspired me <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. Each one. Yeah. Teach one, right? Dude, that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. Out. That's why we do this, right, Melissa? Hell mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. We are lifting as we're climbing. That doesn't have to just be in a corporate environment. We mm -hmm. doing it right here on this daggone podcast. I wanna Don't say believe. one I wanna yeah. say one more thing though. You know, like I've I've been in this place before and you know, we had you can get off track, I, or at least mm -hmm. you know I'm I'm speaking from my own personal experience. You can get off track. You could be doing the right thing for a long time and then get off track for a time, but that doesn't mean that you can't get right back on track. That's all. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you said you know getting off track because I started back with my trainer and I'm like, dang, it's gonna take me a whole year to get all this weight off, don't you agree? And he was like, I don't know. He was like, because you have to be consistent. Consistency mm -hmm. is the key. Mm -hmm. If you're not consistent, it's gonna take you longer. If you are consistent and add a little more oomph to it, then it could take you a shorter period of time. But he mm -hmm. was just honing in on being consistent, which I'm not, I'm, I am with him. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a person, I'm, I'm a big procrastinator or something else grabs my attention and then I move on to the, to the next thing. And then yeah. I complain that I don't have the weights not coming off, you know, or I don't look the way that I used to look mm -hmm. when I was younger. But you had to put it in the work. You didn't, if, if you're someone who has gained weight, I'm using that as an example, it didn't take you three days to put it on, so it's not going to take three days to get it off. Mm -hmm. That's right. Real talk tonight, folks. Real talk right, right here. I'm I'm actually dealing with the same as far as uh, I just cannot get back in my workout routine. There was a time where I was consistent for, um, yeah, most of the full two years, and. Um, I kind of fell off once I sprained my ankle and then the, and then I get back on there. There are times where I get on pretty good, but this time right here, I think I fell off. This is this time here. I fell off the, the longest and uh, I'm trying to trying to get back on track. And just as you mentioned, you know, you start picking that weight back up. It takes a lot longer to get it off. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I will say is it's I, you, I've gotten to a mindset where um, 
where you just start just not worrying about as far as one said this to me before. They said, don't worry about what the, what the scale says, because as you're working out, um, even though you might not be able to see it, you can, people can see it. And even if you haven't lost what you, what you want in different areas, your clothes will fall on you in a way where it will let people know that you're doing something about it. But what I've also learned is to take my workouts one workout at a time. So each time I complete one is an accomplishment and not so mm -hmm. much worry about how long I've been doing it and I got this much longer to go. And I know it's hard, but eventually your mind just kind of changes into that. That's how it happened for yeah. me. Yeah. And just quite frankly, for me at least, stop being lazy. You know, it, it doesn't take any energy to, to go outside and go for a walk around the neighborhood. It just, it just takes getting off the couch and doing that. Yeah, for sure. That's real. Life is about choices. And it's, it's a really simple principle. We yeah. get to choose. We get to choose. Everybody yeah. gets, you know, growing up in New York, I was offered to become a drug dealer. I saw how the dudes were making money. But I thought about, man, if I'm, if I didn't, and he, to, he told me the hours, you know, it was a third shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, man, I ain't about to miss school. My father will kick my ass. So, you know, the, the ass whippings paid off. <laughs> Cause I was more afraid of that than, you know, going to jail. Mm. Right. So, I mean, there it is. <laughs> there it is. It's about choices, man. Everybody, yeah. everybody gets to choose. No doubt. Yep, yeah. you do. I would be careful with the uh, the uh, the labels, though, Melissa. You know the the lazy part. You know it's 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 a thing. You know you have to get over a hurdle when you're starting new habits. And it's, it's rough. It's rough for all of us. And I don't, that doesn't make us lazy. It's just, it's a tough thing to do to get over those initial hurdles. And it takes time to build habits, you know, and it's, yeah. it's not easy to break old bad habits. I see it all the time. I see people talking about they want to lose weight and then they quickly will grab some candy and snack on it on a regular basis and it's like that's no small thing that's a big thing you gotta you gotta break that and it's not easy to do it and that, and that and even that that doesn't make you any kind of label insert whatever label here it's just a habit that you built over time and you're gonna have to break it if you want to reach a different goal if you want a different outcome so yeah but sometimes you got i'm gonna challenge that a little bit some sometimes you gotta name it to change it but lazy though, I don't like. I mean, lazy some, but you got to, you know, I'm, you know, if, if you've ever been to therapy, and the therapist asks you how are you doing, and you say I'm not feeling too good, that's not an answer to them. They want to get to all right, a name, yeah, and sometimes so you have to name it. Yeah, sometimes you have to name it, man. Well, I mean, I understand if, if that's you the know, way you're um, feeling. You know, I'm just, I'm not saying that you're wrong and that I'm right. I'm, I'm just saying sometimes you have to name it to change it. Fair enough. I would give it your both. I just, I would, that's yeah, yeah I, I would give it, I would give it a different name. But yeah. if, if that's the way you, if that's the way you feel in front of your therapist and when your therapist asks you if you feel lazy, yeah, definitely name, name it that. But I just, I just would, I, I see it a diff from a different angle. It's all a different perspective. And that's all fair. Yeah. Yeah, I see both. I see Rasmo um, taking it from a kind of like a positive body image type perspective and drawing in some positivity. And I see you, um, um, Kay Diddy, talking about it from a realistic standpoint. What is it from <laughs> being a realist, right? Well, I didn't, I didn't doctor my it's opinion up. It's, well, it's all in how you, you know, react. What, you know, it's, what, it's perspective. what perspective, but, you know, perspective, what, what right. motivates you, what pushes you. 
You know, I, I, I don't, I don't want pie in the sky. Oh, give it a different name. I'm like, no, get off your ass, dude. 30 minutes, man. And I'm cursing at myself. If you come look at my whiteboard, it says, just get the shit done, son. That's what I wrote on my whiteboard. So when I'm slacking and I don't want to, I look at that. Get it done, man. Uh, and he feels so that's how I, that's, I need that. I, I, I can't, I don't, the whole, you know, let's ride a sheep on a rainbow. I, nah, nah, son. So you feel it? You feel as though if you don't do it, you're, you're being, you're a lazy person. You, you would, you well, would categorize well, yourself I, as a lazy person. You think that's how? Well, I want well, I, I would call. I would say that I'm, I'm slacking. Slacking. Because I'm making, because, because I'm making time for everything else. It's all about <laughs> choices. It is about. Choices. I can sit in, I can sit in this office all day and geek out on my servers and computers and stuff. So I can't take 30 minutes, 30 minutes to just ride the Peloton or get on the elliptical back here or go down in my gym that I paid thousands of dollars for to, to freaking work out and just lift weights for 30 minutes. Or the memberships I have that um, collecting dust, they take out my daggone account going to use well, them. But that, you know, I, yeah, I see yeah. both of your perspectives. Yeah. I think Yo, that we, I'm sorry, Melissa. I ain't no, gonna no. cut you off. Go for it. Nah, Go for I, it. uh, you know, like, the, yeah, y'all talk, we're talking about, um, we're talking about, uh, exercise goals right now. But there's mm -hmm. been things that I've let slip that I knew better than to let slip. Accounts I should have closed, things mm -hmm. I should have put in place with accounts, you know, like, you could call it lazy. You could call it lazy, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's the same thing as that. Y what y'all are ascribing to the the workout routine or the lack. So, what thereof. would you say if somebody said, Derek? What, what do you have to do? What what do you, what what it what name that what what is it that's causing you to be that way? What is that habit? Name it. What would you say? About, what, what would you call it? Wow, I try. I, I don't. I don't know. I never. Uh, I never really thought about it. I, I don't really. I don't really try to label things like that. But I think lazy is a. I. I. I see. I look at it as a pejorative. And I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to put that on myself. Let me that one. <laughs> as a. As lazy, a neg I mean, I can see where that is a negative connotation, especially. Yeah. When it comes to the black community, right? Because yeah. that's the word that they, they throw yeah. on it. So I can yeah. see where I, I need to so take that nerve. word. Got it. Yeah, I got to take that word out of my vocabulary because I'm certainly not lazy. Mm. But when it comes to something, I'm a big ass procrastinator. If you think walk around that block for 30 minutes, I can find, Fair. you know, 10 other things that have fill that space. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. And um, so I could see where where the connotation could could hit a nerve for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm not saying it hit a nerve. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying I'm not... It hit a nerve, but where you we need to take it out of our vocabulary. And you I think it would trying. be. I, I think it would be a healthy thing to take that word out of the vocabulary. Yeah. As it I pertains to as it pertains to yourself. Yeah. I get it. That's all. Uh, I get it. I smell what the rock is cooking. Mm -hmm. She's picking up what you're putting down, bro. Hey, that's good. Picking up what you're putting down. All right, we're going to go to the next topic about what defines a sexy woman. Before I do that, I'm going to read you an excerpt from my latest book that will be hitting the shelves sometime this year. And these, I'm going to show the description of these two women and then get your opinion on what you think is a sexy woman. Okay, y'all ready? Mm -hmm. All right, Close so. This book <laughs> that's coming out, I'm not going to even reveal the title, but okay. So she, the story I'm going in, right in the middle. We look dope as hell. The music is fire. We got a buzz on. So let's get it lit in here. You right. She said, dropping a two second twerk after her grin. We is fine as hell. We were. Jamela wore tight black jeans, a camouflage belly shirt, a red thigh high suede boots, her ombre goddess braids were pulled perfectly into a bun with a bright African print headband circling the front of her head. She was gorgeous. 
She is already light-skinned with green eyes, so the colors in her headband made a masterpiece in the room, made her a masterpiece in the room. I didn't tell her that, though, because black women don't participate in lifting each other, but we will join a pity party in a heartbeat. Anyway, I was wearing a short black skirt with splashes of red sparkles. I picked up one from one of those websites like Shein, and it was short enough to see every inch of my thighs cellulite to offer. I had, comp I had compliment complimented the skirt with a yellow bodysuit that revealed the curvature of my belly rolls, red sequin mid-calf boots, and my wet and wavy braids were neatly adjusted into bantu knot zigzag through my head. I thought I was sexy until I reviewed my timeline sober. I had the nerve to be walking around taking selfies in the bathroom mirror all confident and shit like I was Gabrielle Union. I almost puked. Mm. You're, a, you're a talented ass woman, boy. Well, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that shit had me like, I, I was actually picturing, as you were reading, I was picturing the shit in my head. <laughs> I saw the sequin red boots. I saw all of that, son. So yeah, you're talented. You're you are talented, Melissa. You are very talented. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So were those women sexy? Not for were me. Were you having to find sexy? Not for me. Them's dead description. Say when's the book coming out? <laughs> Yeah. And you want to know, is it going to be the book with pop-up pictures? Oh. <laughs> Life, life size. Make the pop-up right. <laughs> you heard it, Mike. I saw the green eyes. Oh, my God. <laughs> the Mike Beasley pop-up edition. <laughs> I seen that too, man. Oh, you did say that, Kai. When I read you something else, you said your character can get it. <laughs> yeah, Yo, sure. when's this book? Yo, we might be, we sure might, we might, we might be on to something right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah with a little, with a little air, with a little air pump. Descriptive, man. It's yeah. Captured. Yeah, they were. When's the book? No doubt. So let's talk about it. What do you find? If a, what do you define as a sexy mm -hmm. woman? Is it how she walks? Is it her the the green eyes? Is it how this? I'm not gonna even go to skin complexion. No, I want to go first. The, I want to um, go first. Her body shape, what? I want to go first. None of those things. I want to go, go first. I want to go first. If all of, all of the physical characteristics I find really don't matter. They don't matter when it comes to sexy. Sexy is more how it's put together in personality and with Perfect. personality. So it's it's confidence one, and then two That's just stupid. how yeah how they carry themselves and how how it all works. You know, like how it all meshes with who I am. So it, it's not like one thing. Like this this I could rattle off a list of things that I think are sexy in a woman, but at the same. Off. I want to know. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not PG. Well, give us. But, give us. Oh, it's not PG. Okay. All right. Well, it's all. It's all the thing. But I would have to go into like very yeah, stark is. detail about, you know, physical characteristics. You know, physical appearance. Uh, and okay, okay. All of that, and it, and I don't want to give off an incorrect impression, and that ter that's a turn off for me when women do that. When women say like, yeah, "Yo, boom, 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 boom," it has to be just like this. That was real. Cause I'm like, not for nothing. It really doesn't have to be like that. You'll do something. You'll be with somebody else that doesn't have any of those characteristics. For me, for me, it really is just how it's carried. It, it, there, there are ways to pull off no, any kind of physical appearance, appearance. Personally, that's just how I feel. It, it doesn't have to do with anything specifically it's about how the personality works with all of it i love oh. that well compatibility has to be there as well and, and you know i'm a firm believer in <clears throat> boundaries and have on my list of negotiables and non-negotiables 
and I get to choose and build that list how I see fit. Okay. Go define sexy. Is it oh, the span well. of their hips? <laughs> Not, well, no, I don't really get caught up in, you know, the big booties and all that because I wouldn't, me, I wouldn't even approach a woman who had, I know, think I, th- I think surgery. we should talk back and forth with this one. You mean back and forth to who? No, 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 no. I'm saying like we should. It should be more of a back and forth discussion. I, I didn't mean to cut you off though, Kyle. Go ahead. Oh, you didn't mean to. So why'd Kay. you do it? <laughs> I guess I meant to. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Ann asked, you know, what what do I define as sexy? And it's it's, it's not monolithic by any stretch. So it's not oh. just one thing, uh, you know, to, and Brother Rasmus said it so eloquently. You know, it's, it's a combination of things. But uh, I can tell you what will turn me off and, and, and make you unsexy to me. You, 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 don't, you don't know how to pick and, first of all, back to the BBLs and the fake boobs and all that. You know, everyone looks, but that's not my, I don't consider that sexy. You know, I don't, I don't want to deal with those issues. Okay, number one. Number two, um, What's, what are okay. BBLs? Brazilian butt lifts. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just you know that's just, just not my thing. I don't I don't be online searching Instagram and twi- TikTok and Twitter for that stuff. Uh, I'm good. Mike, you were last one to talk about what do you define as sexy in a woman? So. I do not exclude a beautiful woman's body. So I do, I do have a little attraction to um, booties. I do like booties. Big <laughs> ones, small ones, just make it just long. So when that song came out, I like big butts that I cannot lie. That was all you was getting, you was jamming in the back. You said big, you oh, said man. big ones, small ones. So all the big booties. ones, small ones, just no booties. Oh, I don't like no booties. It's the booty man. Okay. Well, I wouldn't say that me and Rasbo don't like big booties. That that wouldn't be like. I, I, well, continue, because I like big butts too, and I cannot <laughs> yeah. lie. Yeah, I was oh, about I to add lie. that for you. I was oh, about I to add lie. it for you. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do, I I do prefer them to be real, and I don't um, discriminate against uh, any shade of black. I love all shades of black. Um, but what really what makes a woman very attractive to me is one who is not trying to expose everything on her body. I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I think there's a tasteful way of being sexy and classy without um, either looking like, you know, whatever, like you, you want everybody dies on you. Um, so there's that. And then there is a level of intelligence that I need a woman to have. Uh, I love a smart woman. You, you don't have to be the most book smart person in the world. I love common sense. I love someone, you know, when I can have a, a intellectual conversation about, you know, whatever interests, you know, whatever topics it could be about anywhere from black history to politics or, you know, whatever. I just like an intelligent, intelligent conversation. It could be even career advice. Someone could be sharing with me something about their experience, uh, you know, with me, but there's something about a woman who is very bright and pleasant, um, to be, to have the combi- combination of beauty and humble and pleasant to talk to. That is, um, yeah. Well, level headed. Got to be level headed too. You yeah. know. You got to be level headed. It is. I mean, the whole yeah. what's good for the goose. Y'all run into these women and y'all be like, "Oh, I'm in love." Yo, you know, mm-hmm. you know that y'all marry her and you be like, yeah. "Cussing y'all out." Psych. Got him. <laughs> 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 well, I think I think that I think that's I, th- I think that's just life. But Mike, yo, you you hit the nail right on the head with, right there. I think we all like we we combine together like Voltron to really bring it we home. We built the perfect woman. Yeah, we just made. Nah, it. I don't know. If we, I don't know if we did that. I don't know if we did that. 
But not for nothing, like, I know for myself anyway, you don't know until you know. You know, like, so, like, you can't really manufacture the woman, like you said, Kai, in your head. You, you have... You have your things, you have your things that you want, that you hope for, and then some, and then every once in a while, well, hopefully just once, it clicks, you know, and it just clicks, and that's your lady. It's called chemistry, right? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I have a but list of negotiables and non negotiables. Okay. Mm. Uh, sometimes chemistry doesn't negotiate, chemistry doesn't discriminate. You can have chemistry with someone, but because they don't feel they don't fit your description of those and have some of those non-negotiables, mm -hmm. you're missing out. No, not necessarily. You can have chemistry with somebody, and there still there can still be other things about them that Weak. just tips the you know scale to the other side for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you have to ask yourself, man, we have chemistry, but this thing here drives me bananas. Right. And, you know, I, I talk to her about it. She, she acknowledges it, but nothing ever changes. So does she even really care about me? That she's not even, you know? So it's like, do I, have, do I have to do way. Does she again? really care about me because she hasn't changed? You, you men think that way. I've heard it more times. I think people, I think people think that way. Women think that way too. I've heard women, do you even care about me? No, that's not what I'm saying. People, I just think it's people, you know? I don't and think that, we can overgeneralize certain things about men and women because there are some things that are just common between both species. I was always taught as a Sexist. young woman when Gen you know, getting into really deeper relationships, like you, there are some things like you're non-negotiables, but you mm -hmm. have to figure out what you truly can live with because none of mm -hmm. us are perfect. Right, yeah, of course. Truly cannot deal mm -hmm. with. Right. And I'm not saying that I'm not so I don't want to put off the message. It's, it probably sounds like, man, that guy's so rigid. No, I have negotiables and non negotiables and I have to choose what's right for me. Mm. You because know, you know, I might say, you know what, I'm gonna let this slide. But all right, Kyle, but it's been a non negotiable. Why are you gonna why are you gonna cross your own boundary? So I go into it, my boundary is constantly being rubbed up against and I'm uncomfortable. And no matter how hard I try, it you know to get over it, just say you know just get over it, son. It, it that doesn't work. The only thing that works is removing myself from that. Wow. Yeah. What were you trying to say, brother Rasbo? Yeah, yeah. My timing was bad with me trying to and 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 check my comment, but I would like to know the same question that you asked of us. Mm. What do you think is sexy? What do you find sexy in a man? Um, conversation and intelligence is for, far most important to me. Like I have to be able to hold a conversation about right. anything. It's really a turn on for me. Mm -hmm. um, as far as a man, um, as someone who is, I don't like men who are um, necessarily drink a lot because I grew up in an alcoholic home. So if I see that you are someone that what? always yeah. drinking, you know, you get pissy drunk. Um, I'm not interested. Mm. Um, and then, um, although I'm a big girl, I don't necessarily like big men, <laughs> but I don't necessarily am not attracted to bigger bigger guys. I've always, I think I like the body frame of my dad who was really tall and, and thin. I like some like meat on them, like not meat, but you know, big like, ugh, like that. But, um, but far more important is I can overcome some of those things if intellectually I can get with you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And I would like to hear uh, Mike and Kai's thoughts on Melissa's yeah. explanation of what she thinks is sexy. And then I, I, I'll follow up after that. Again, it, it's all about beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
you know, I don't, we, yeah. I, I, and I'm sure I can speak for you all. We don't let society define for us what sexy is in terms of somebody we potentially want to get with. I think right. all of us are way too intelligent and we've been through some shit and, we've, and, and we know who we are as people and we know what we want. And so it's in the eye of the beholder. So if those one are the other things... Thing, yeah, one, one other thing I have to add is I have to, the person has to make me feel comfortable. Yeah. Like right. if they don't make me feel comfortable, I, I can feel it and I will be immediately turned off. You know what? Mama House said that there are those things that are common. They're just common between man and woman. And then there are things where all right, men, men dominate in, in these categories and women dominate in these categories. Unequivocally, a woman loves a man mm-hmm. who's confident, intelligent, and who's, you know, exudes power. And not power in such a way where he's ruling the relationship with an iron throne, but he just walks in confidence and he knows his vision and he knows what the hell he wants to do with his life, right? Number two, she just said it, you know, Women want to feel safe with the man that they're with. You know, I've been told by women, you know, when I'm with you, I, don't, yep. I, I know I don't have anything to worry about. That's important for a woman, gentlemen mm-hmm. out here listening. And then and the, the intelligence. Women love somebody who that they can come to and say, hey, babe, you know how to fix this? Well, you know what? Boom. I've never done this before, but it looks simple. Boom, boom. Women love that shit. But don't get it twisted. Men love it too. Or any conversation. If I bring up something about, like, all of us have went in here talking about, like, monkeypox. When we were talking about monkeypox and for us to to start to have that conversation, we don't know all the elements of it, Mm -hmm. but we had a conversation. I need to be able to have that type of conversation with someone. Mm-hmm. Where even if you don't know, you're going to go to Google on the slide mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, start like to that. have that conversation where we can start to have an adult conversation. But uh, don't come to me talking about you seen this thing on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. People want people want to feel like the other person is interested in them. Me and Mike talk about this all the time. You know, I'm, yeah. I, if, if I'm out somewhere at a bar, wherever, and I see somebody that I'm interested in, I'm going to try to make eye contact to see if there's some cue or signal that it's okay to approach. You feel what I'm saying? Are we supposed to do that? Because I, for all of my yes. womanhood, yes. I get have gotten yes. that. I just look away. I don't know if we're supposed yes. I didn't know we're supposed to say, hey. Yes. Well, no, it doesn't have, but it you doesn't have to be yeah. over the top yeah. like that. It doesn't have to be over the top like that. It can be a few. You know, you make back. eye contact, and you you just know, you you know, I, it's it's hard for me to explain it. It's hard for me to put a name on it, Derek. But, I don't want to be you know. ignored. Yo. I don't want to be ignored. That's all I wanted to say. I think I, it's and I, and confidence. I, I mean, confidence, not understanding what what you want. Because when I was younger, I would say, "Why are they staring at me?" And my daughter gets mm-hmm. the same thing. Why is a why is a man staring at you? Yeah. Because he's interested. I mean, but never said anything. Just staring. That the staring is the thing. No, I disagree with it, Rasbo. Well, it could be something different. Okay, so the the question was, you know, about you. you if you see a guy, you probably look at him a little longer if you're interested. With that said, that is all a guy is really looking at. They're looking for you to take that two, three, four, five seconds longer to look at them to say you notice them too. That's all. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And that alone, that alone is is giving a guy the okay to come over. That's it. Right. Right. That's it. It's that simple. Yeah, just fooling. Cool. Like, that's now, good. Now, 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 woman now, knows that. Right. Instead well, of looking, and, and some yeah. occasions, in some occasions. If I'm feeling something, if I'm really feeling that woman, I will mm-hmm. go ahead and take the risk and put myself out there. Ooh, I'm that's not, the because I'm not, risk. Yeah, because I'm not afraid of rejection. I mean, everybody's not going to choose me. I'm not everybody's mm-hmm. cup of tea. Rule number right. one, get over yourself. Because <laughs> if, you, if you're into yourself like that, you, you're going to always be hurt out here. Because the world is not a nice place. And everybody's not going to be nice. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's deep. Y'all spooning. I'll go with that. So next time I, a guy is staring at me, I'm gonna be like, "Tell your daddy I said hi." She gonna be like, "Hey." <laughs> Kai and them said to say hey. <laughs> Mike and them, hmm. my brothers. Mike and them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Mike and home. Yeah, man. Wow. What a podcast. Um, this was a great, 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 great conversation. I totally agree with you, Brother Asbo. Um, thank you all. This is always the highlight of any given week that we are recording, whether you guys know it or not. I know I'm a pain in the ass to you, but I um, truly enjoy this. What else? I enjoy <laughs> these interactions. Um, it really is. It gives me energy. Um, just having this time with, with you all. Um, so I hope you enjoyed them as much as I do <laughs> and back at y'all as always, I see you because I am you. Thank you for listening.